Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and I'm on WW Personal Points. Happy Monday, it is Monday, so it is meal prep day. I have three really good recipes for you. I'm coming back at you with a recipe that you have asked for more and more of. We have breakfast, lunch, and a high protein sweet treat. So if you're excited, give this video a big huge thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed and your bell notification is turned on because I upload a meal prep every Monday and five videos every single week. Check out the description box down below for nutrition coaching. I do offer personalized to you macros and calories highly, highly recommend, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching if you would like to chat with me directly. Links and discounts to my favorite things, my recipe website where you'll find all three of today's recipes, as well as my Facebook group. Come on over, join us there. We'd love to have you. All that good stuff is down in that description box. So without further ado, let's jump in to meal prep. this week, I am making chaffle French toast sticks. Last week we made pizza chaffles and you guys asked for more and more and more chaffle recipes. So today we are making one specifically for breakfast. And I'm really excited for this. I love a good French toast stick, but they're usually really high in points and calories and sugar. So let me show you how we're making this a little bit more WW friendly and calorie friendly. First, you're going to need some eggs, some reduced fat mozzarella cheese, cinnamon, all-purpose flour, powdered sugar alternative of your choice. I am using Lakanto powdered. It is my favorite powdered sugar alternative. Tastes just like regular powdered sugar and is one of the healthier sugar substitutes. So I will link Lakanto down below for you with 15% off and then you'll need some light butter. One thing I also want to point out is if you want to make, if you would like to make these chaffles a little bit more low carb, you could substitute all purpose flour for coconut flour or almond flour. But let's go ahead and jump into our chaffle French toast sticks. So to get started on our chaffles, you're going to need small to medium sized bowl. Go ahead and crack in four eggs. I like to go ahead and give those a quick mix. I just wanna break the yolk and get them mixed up just a little bit before adding in the rest of the ingredients. Now we're going to add one quarter cup of whatever flour you're using, two cups of light shredded mozzarella cheese, about a half a teaspoon of cinnamon is what the recipe calls for, but I'm going to put in more like a tablespoon. You know I love everything cinnamon, so I always add a little bit of extra. And then two tablespoons of Lakanto powdered sweetener. And then mix that thoroughly. So you can use a large waffle maker or a small waffle maker. The original recipe calls for a large one. Remember, we're making these into French toast sticks, so we're going to cut them into strips. I must have gotten rid of our waffle maker when we moved because I really never use it. So I'm going to use my small dash one. This is the one I really like for chaffles. I will link it down below for you because I picked it up off of Amazon. Super easy to use. You can see that the light is on. When it turns off, it is warmed up and we'll start making the chaffles. Our waffle maker is warmed up. I'm going to spray it with a little bit of nonstick cooking spray and then we're going to add some mixture. Now it really doesn't matter how many chaffles we get out of the batter will determine the points based on how many we get. So it makes it really, really simple. So I like to put a good amount in the waffle maker, close it up, and when the light clicks off, it is done. So it is done and you can see that I made my chaffle a little bit too big, so we're going to add a little less batter in the next one, but that looks so good. I'm just going to set it aside on a plate, spray my waffle maker again, and repeat until we've used all the batter. Okay. 
Okay, my last chaffle is done, so I'm going to pop it on the plate. I ended up with six chaffles total. Let's go ahead and cut these into sticks. So my plan is to cut each chaffle into three pieces, three equal pieces. Into a bowl, I'm going to crack the other two eggs. Add some more cinnamon and then whisk those eggs together. I lined a baking sheet with some foil and melted one tablespoon of light butter. I'm going to just spread that onto the foil. And then we're going to take each French toast stick, dip it into the egg and cinnamon mixture, and then put it on the baking sheet. These are actually going to go in the oven to crisp up, just like French toast. Also make sure when you're applying the French toast sticks to the baking sheet that you're leaving a little bit of room between each one. We're going to place our French toast sticks into a 350 degree oven for 10 minutes. We're going to pull them out, flip them, brush them with butter, and put them back in. I pulled out the French toast sticks. They're already getting nice and crispy. Really quickly, I'm just going to flip them over. After starting to flip these, I would highly recommend spraying your foil with some nonstick cooking spray before putting your French toast sticks on there because they like to stick. I actually looked back over the directions and it does not mention spraying them spraying the foil, but I definitely would. So that was not fun. I actually had to get a spatula to scrape them off. I know we added butter to the foil, but definitely spray it. That's what's great about these meal preps is you guys can learn from me what you need to do when you make these. I will say they smell really delicious, but unfortunately you have to have to spray that baking sheet with some nonstick cooking spray because otherwise they stick like crazy. So we're going to pop these back in the oven for about six to eight more minutes until this side is crispy. I just pulled out the chocolate French toast sticks. They actually look really good and they smell amazing. It actually smells like cinnamon rolls in here. I'm going to transfer these into a storage container. We'll go over points, calories. I'll show you how I'm going to warm them up throughout the week and how I'm going to serve them. Look at how amazing these look. They are really, really crispy. My plan to warm these up is either to pop them back in the oven or into the air fryer. Now you can microwave them if you would like. Just remember they won't be as crispy as they are now fresh out of the oven. They are cooked through. So it'd be just a few minutes to cook them in the oven or in your air fryer. My plan is to serve them with the Lakanto maple syrup. I actually have the cinnamon maple too. So either one of those is my favorite syrup. You can see that this big one is almost gone. Both Troy and I really, really like this syrup. So I'll make sure again that Lakanto is linked in the description box, 15% off site-wide. So that even includes the syrup. But I will go ahead and put the points and calories here on the screen for you. Cannot wait to have this with some fruit for breakfast this week. For my lunch this week, I'm making a one pot cheesy taco pasta. I've been craving tacos and pasta, so why not put them together in a super simple one pot meal? This would also make a great busy weeknight or weekend dinner family friendly, kid approved, who doesn't love cheesy taco pasta? Let me show you what's in the recipe. First you're going to need a pound of ground beef. You could use 93 or 96. An onion, I have this half an onion in my fridge. I'm going to use that up. A red bell pepper, some celery, salt and pepper. As always, I will link my gravity fed salt and pepper shakers down below from Amazon, super affordable and they're really fun to use. You're also going to need some fresh salsa, I have the Trader Joe's light shredded cheese. You'll just need some Mexican blend light cheese, a can of corn or frozen corn, taco seasoning, broth of your choice. I'm using beef because I have this in my fridge that needs to be used up. And lastly, whatever pasta that you're going to use. And of course I'm using fiber gourmet, highly, highly recommend. It is half the calories of traditional pasta, 110 for two ounces, that's a lot of pasta. Not to mention it has 24 grams of fiber, fiber 17 net carbs, and seven 
grams of protein. So it's a great way to help get in your fiber. And we know that fiber and protein help us lose weight and keep us full. So I buy mine off of the Nutrition website. I find that they have the most affordable price and all the different shapes because it does come in rotini, spaghetti, penne, and elbow macaroni. So I'll link Nutrition down below for you. Like I said, I highly recommend Fiber Gourmet. Let's go ahead and get started on lunch. Like I said, this is a one pot pasta. So I have a big stock pot over medium heat sprayed with some non-stick cooking spray. And the first thing I'm going to do is add in my diced up red bell pepper, celery, and onion. And we're going to allow it to saute down for about three to four minutes. Once your veggies have sauteed down for a few minutes, we're going to add in our pound of ground beef. Go ahead and break that up and allow that to brown completely. Your veggies will continue to cook, caramelize, and soften with the ground beef. Also on a side note, this is such a lean cut of ground beef, there won't be any fat. It'll all render off during the cooking process. Once your ground beef is cooked, we're adding one cup of salsa, three cups, three cups of broth, half of a cup of corn, our box of fiber gourmet pasta, taco seasoning, and salt and pepper. Give that a mix. Go ahead and turn it up to about a medium high heat. Pop a lid on and we're going to allow it to cook until the pasta is cooked completely through. We're going to go ahead and remove the lid. Ooh, this smells so good. And allow the pasta to cook the last two to three minutes with the lid off. Look at how amazing that looks. All right, last but not least for our pasta, we're adding half of a cup of light shredded cheese. Mix that in and allow that cheese to melt through the pasta and it is done. So super, super simple, everything in one pot. And there is the cheesy taco pasta. Oh my goodness, like I said, this looks so good. It smells absolutely delicious. I will go ahead and put serving sizes, points, calories here on the screen. I'm going to allow this to cool, package it up in a bowl with a lid, throw it in the fridge, and I'll just weigh out a portion every single day for lunch, but I can tell you I'm pretty excited about this. For a sweet treat, we are making peanut butter balls, but we're making chocolate dipped peanut butter balls. Again, I'm really excited for these. Peanut butter, chocolate, one of my very favorite things. And these have protein and they're healthy. So let me show you what's in our recipe. You will again need the Lakanto powdered substitute. Again, Lakanto's linked down below for you with the 15% off. Any protein powder of your choice, I'm just using some vanilla protein powder, some avocado oil or olive oil, sugar-free maple syrup. As always, I'm using Lakanto. You'll need some powdered peanut butter, vanilla, extract and some unsweetened baking chocolate. So to get started on the peanut butter balls, I went ahead and did one cup of powdered peanut butter. I just added some water to it to get a peanut butter consistency. Now you can use regular nut butter if you want to. Whenever I'm cooking with peanut butter, for the most part I should say, I will use a powdered peanut butter. It saves on calories, points, fat, everything. And you really can't tell the difference when you're baking or cooking with the powdered peanut butter. So I have that and one third cup of sugar-free maple syrup, one half of a cup of protein powder, and then we're going to add about two teaspoons of vanilla extract. And then we want to mix this together really well. You could put this in a food processor, use a hand blender, or put this in your blender. I'm going to see if I can get this mixed with a spoon, and if not, we'll go ahead and pop it into my magic bullet. But make sure that it is mixed together really well. Now we're going to add in an additional half of a cup of powdered peanut butter and mix. We want this to be a dough consistency, so you may have to add additional powdered peanut butter to get that consistency, but it looks like this additional half of a cup is going to do that for me. 
I did want to show you that I used the tree nut brand. I ended up adding some of the chocolate peanut butter to for that extra half of a cup. So I have some regular and some chocolate. This is what your dough should look like. So it should be more of a sticky dough. And then we're going to scoop this out onto a baking sheet. We're shooting for about 12 balls and we want them to be about an inch or so. So looking similar to that, we're going to lay them out on the baking sheet. So I ended up getting 14 of the little peanut butter balls. I'm going to throw these into the freezer for about 20 to 30 minutes. The peanut butter balls are just about ready to come out of the freezer. So I have three ounces of the baking chocolate. There's another ounce here that we're not using. We're going to add three tablespoons of Lakanto powder and one tablespoon of oil. So olive oil, avocado oil, whatever you have. And then we're going to toss this in the microwave and allow it to melt. Make sure you're stirring it frequently so it doesn't seize. The chocolate is all melted. I just pulled the peanut butter balls out, put them on a toothpick, and then we're going to basically just roll them in the chocolate and then place them on some parchment paper. We will put them back into the freezer. So what I did is just kind of scoop them up off the tray with a fork, re-rolled them into a ball because they kind of lost their shape. You actually may not even need a toothpick. You could just roll it in there and then use the toothpick to pull it out and again, place it on the parchment paper. And we're going to do that with all 12 peanut butter balls. These look so good. We're throwing these back into the freezer for about another hour until they're completely set. One hour later. And here are the finished peanut butter protein balls. They are frozen. I'm going to actually keep them in the freezer because I think the consistency and texture will be better and it'll make that chocolate nice and hard and crunchy on the outside. So I will go ahead and put points calories here on the screen for you. Thank you for joining me for this week's WW meal prep. I hope you are as excited about these three recipes as I am. I can't wait to have all of this delicious healthy food all week long. Don't forget all of the recipes are on my website which is linked down in the description box, along with nutrition coaching, links and discounts to my favorite things, and of course my Facebook group. Don't forget to come and join us there. We would love to have you. Thank you so much for watching, friends. Happy Monday, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!